a little while back, I made a video about lazy loading where I used intersection observers to do it because it was more performant than using like a scroll listener or something like that. Pretty easy to implement and a really good use of intersection observer. And I was really surprised because a lot of people seemed against the whole idea of lazy loading. And I wasn't sure if it's because you had to bring in some extra JavaScript or because you're using third party sometimes to do it. Or, you know, there is that issue sometimes when you're scrolling down a page and the image comes in after and the content shifts and stuff like that. There's a whole bunch of things that I guess people could be against, but it's just a good idea to implement on your site. If you want people sticking around on your website, you need it loading really fast. If you want Google liking your site, you need it loading really fast. It's all about performance and speed these days. You need these things going and lazy loading is a really easy way to add a extra performance boost. And while I looked at intersection observers for it before, there's a native way to do it in the browser now. It's super easy to implement. So we're gonna see in this video, not only how easy it is to implement, we don't even need any JavaScript. It's literally like 15 characters, something like that. It's really short. But we're also going to see how we can, you know, I think a lot of people get annoyed with lazy loading because you seem to get, it's more often you get those jumps in content. You scroll, you're reading, and then all of a sudden everything gets pushed down. You have to re-scroll and nobody likes that. So we're going to see how you can prevent that from happening. Let's go and see how this works. Hi there and welcome to this video. My name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks and tutorials just like this one. But before we do dive into this tutorial, I do want to let you know that this video is being brought to you by none other than Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of amazing classes including design, video and of course front end development. I signed up for them at one point because I wanted some quick Photoshop and Illustrator tutorials and I loved what I went through but I also ended up diving in through a whole bunch of other classes while I was there. There was just tons of high quality content. Now when you sign up for Skillshare, you get unlimited access to thousands of classes. Plus a lot of them include hands-on projects that you can work on and you can get feedback on the work that you do in those projects from their community of literally millions of people. It's a really awesome platform with incredible content, including getting started with CSS Grid by none other than Rachel Andrew. So if Grid is something you've wanted to learn, you find it is a little bit confusing, you're not sure where to get started with it, there is probably no one else you'd wanna start learning Grid from than somebody like Rachel Andrew who helped spearhead the whole getting grid to be a thing. So I mean, you can't ask for better than that. If this sounds interesting to you, make sure you go and click the link down in the description below. The first 1000 of my subscribers who click on that link will get a two month free trial of their premium membership. Thank you very much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's go talk about some lazy loading. So what we're gonna look at first is what is lazy loading and we talked a little bit about why you should care about it already. It's all about performance, but it's all about making images that the user hasn't scrolled down to yet. They don't load. Because you know, if a user hasn't scrolled there, we don't need all these things loading in for nothing. It's not only for images either, it is for iframes as well. And iframes are notorious for being really slow. So for both of these things, you can just help that first paint of your page come in much, much faster and be fully loaded. So here we are in VS Code. You can see I've brought in a whole bunch of images here. Um, and I've made this really long page and it's really just like a demo page, a whole bunch of images that are all stacked on top and tons of filler text. Um, and I'm bringing this in just to show you really how um, you know, the power of lazy loading. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up my console and we can see I'm already on my network tab here. So if you're on inspector and I am in Firefox, but if you're in Chrome, it's exactly the same. I'm sure Safari has something like this as well. And one of the nice things with this network tab is I'm gonna disable cache. So it's if somebody's the first time they're on their site or their cache has been cleared for some reason and you can simulate different types of connections that people are on. So we always develop locally things load. You could have like a five meg image and it's gonna load instantly because you're local on your machine. That's not realistic to the real world. Um, we're also, a lot of us developers, we're on state-of-the-art devices all the time. That's not realistic always to the real world. You get bad connections for whatever reason, even if it's a bad Wi-Fi connection. Um, so let's go to a good 3G connection. And I know everyone's like, oh, we're on 4G now, 5G is coming. Not everyone in the world is on that. You're on old devices. There could be a number of reasons why things are slower. So let's simulate what it is. So by doing disable cache, good uh, 3G, I'm gonna refresh my page. And you can see there's some stuff going on here. We're not gonna worry, but you can actually see how the page took some time to load in there. Um, and what's happening with this network tab is you can actually see how long everything's taking to load in. So you can see that it first took 96 milliseconds here. You can see nothing was really taking too long. Oh, I have type kit, so that slowed things down slightly. Um, it blocked the site from loading for 26 seconds and then it had to wait a little while before finally it got what it needed. 
But where did things really slow down? Over here we had some images that were coming in and then, oh, whoa, look at this. Some of these images, they took a long time to come in. My goodness. And they're not even big images like 49 KB, 19 KB. Some of these ones that took a lot longer, they're like 12 KB, but it took a long time to receive this because it's a slower internet connection. Huh, that's interesting, right? And so all these were coming in. You can see it took a while for the page to finish uh, coming all the way in to get to that last image. So, and again, let's just hit refresh and see it takes a little while for that to come in. And then obviously all this is everything is in there now, but these images are tiny images, right? Um, but before we, we look at what happens with bigger images, I wanna show you how easy this is now. Cause as I said, you could do this with JavaScript. Um, I'm just gonna go there. If you don't know about this in VS code, you can place your cursor in multiple places at once. So I'm just holding down alt while I do that. Cause I am on windows. I'm guessing it's option on a Mac, but I could be wrong on that one. Um, so what I'm right now is loading is equal to lazy. Nice and easy, right? And let's hit save. And whoops, I forgot. Let's, uh, I wanted to do that down here as well. So let's come down here and do it on these ones as well. Could have done that all at once, but that's all right. Loading is equal to lazy. And we'll hit save. Now let's open that network tab back up again. And you'll notice there's a lot less stuff in here. Where's, where's the images? The they haven't loaded in. There's been no network requests for those images. That is interesting, right? And now uh, I wanna leave this up here. Let's just shrink this down a little bit on the side here um, like that so we can see as I scroll here. And before we get to the images or right as the images came in, you can see, boom, all of those came in. And, but it's only stopped at image number seven because then I had that wall of text. So now I'm gonna keep going. And then as we approach, we're gonna get to some text in a second and then, whoop, and then as I approach the rest of my images, suddenly those ones all load in as well. And then we get those other images that are right there. Cool, right? So we're only loading the images in as we need them. And that's what lazy loading is. So if you're on a slow internet connection, you're on a mobile device, it's websites loading slowly, whether it's a bad Wi-Fi connection or you don't have great, um, uh, you know, you are on 3G for whatever reason, this could save you a lot of data because if you're not scrolling, you're just clicking to the next thing. That's really cool. Or if you are scrolling, it's only loading them in as they need them. So right away, there's a huge performance boost. And as we saw from the very beginning, the initial page load much, much, much faster because there's a lot less things that need to be loaded in for the page to be fully rendered. So that's really, really cool. Now, uh, one thing just really fast, let's just say, I'm gonna go to my CSS here for one second. I made this big top area where I did 100 VH because I wanted my images to be off screen at the beginning. It is recommended that if the images are visible at the, uh, when the page loads that you don't actually put uh, loading equals lazy on there. We don't want this to load in uh, lazily. We want it to be there right when the page loads. So I could come in on say the first four images here just because I wanna be safe and you, know, you don't know screen sizes and stuff and I could leave it off on those ones. Um, and then I could leave it on for anything that would be lower down on the page and that would be completely fine. Uh, another choice that you do have is you could actually come in and put eager on these. Um, eager is the same behavior as if it wasn't there though. Um, so eager is saying no matter what, even if this is, could be like an image all the way down at the bottom, load it in even if, I, even if it's not close to being in the viewport. Um, now we don't have to include this because it is the default behavior. So if you just leave that off, then you're not changing anything or not changing too much there. Um, so that is an option as well right there. Um, but we can include the lazy. It's generally not something you'd want to do if it's something that is above the fold, but if it's anything where a user would scroll to see it, then you'd want to include your uh, loading equals lazy. Now to show you, I think one of the issues that people do have with it is these jumps that happen. So I do want to show you what I'm talking about. And I have these extra images uh, that I have right here. Uh, so let me just see if I can uncomment those. And let's take these ones out because we're gonna have too many images if not, and we'll hit save. And if I come down far enough, we'll find some big images right here. There's one and there's more, but this one's loading in slowly. Oh, boom, there's another one and then Come on, slowly but surely. These are big images. They're each over a meg and we're on a slow internet connection and boom, there's the next one. And actually I had lazy loading on these already. So let's just take that off. And just to show you, um, it is an exaggeration what I'm doing in this case, but I'm gonna come all the way up. Uh, let's bring this guy over here. 
Um, and when the page reloads, you can see that big one is coming in. And actually, can we get that cascading, the waterfall? You can see uh, we're sort of stuck right now, actually. <laughs> um, it's taking so long for these images to come in. It has actually caused a bit of a problem, and a, bit of, a bit of a backlog. My image number three hasn't come in yet. You can see the page is still going. Oh, boom, there we go. Big three has finally come in. Um, this is really slowing my site down with these big images. That one's three megs, this one's one meg. So this is like putting the brakes. My page is still loading right now. It's really putting the brakes on. Now, don't use lazy loading to get around images like this, please. Uh, don't go, oh, I can now put a three megabyte image in my website. That's not at all what I'm saying. <laughs> I just want to show you one of the problems that lazy loading can cause and the fix that you can use for it. So that's why I brought these huge images in. Um, so here, let's add the, uh, the lazy loading back in. When I scroll down though, what's going to happen is I'm going to get to some text and then boom. Oh, it's gone. My text. Okay. That's okay. Let's start reading this. Da da da. Lorem ipsum consentor. Oh, whoa, where'd my content go? Okay. Oh, there it is again. Fugits and da da da. Essay, iram, possum. I can't read Latin, but oh, my content just shifted again. I'm sure you've been on a phone or something like that's happening. It's usually ads that are the culprit here, where as the ad loads in, uh, all of a sudden the content on your page is shifting around. One really cool thing with lazy loading is you can also do this on iframes as well. So that could be useful for ads. Um, and another thing you could do with iframes as well as images is you can give them width and height attributes. So I would strongly encourage doing that on any images you have. Um, so I'm going to speed this up just as I bring a width and a height on here. Okay, so there we go. You can see I now have my width and my height on all three of these images. And so let's uh, here come back up to the top and hit refresh and all our content should start coming in. But the advantage now that I've given it a width and a height is when I get here, uh, you can see there's actually these big blank spaces. So even though the images haven't finished loading in yet, there's gonna be no jumping content. When that image comes in, there's a placeholder here. Now it's completely blank placeholder. or It's holding that space because the browser knows that image is coming. So by assigning the width and the height on here, it's automatically just going to work and you're not gonna get weird jumps in content. This is the same for iframes as well. Um, and another advantage um, and cool thing with this now actually is Firefox was the first one to do this. Chrome has implemented it and Safari's in the process of implementing um, another feature that comes with your width and your height. And what that is, is if you assign a width and a height, the aspect ratio of the image is automatically calculated by the browser. So when we resize things with CSS, because these are massive, like do not have images that are this big in general on your site, unless you have a really good reason. Um, but these are huge they're not that big on my screen right now because I'm using my max width and my height auto to resize them. Um, if I resize this, my images are resizing with my browser window right here. The, the viewport grows and shrinks. It has to be resized. And when images were resized, it actually used to cause things to be repainted a little bit. The browser had to recalculate everything. If you have a width and a height assigned as attributes now, it actually speeds everything up. It makes everything a lot smoother. Uh, when you have the, something like this that's on there. Now you do have to make sure you don't only have a max width because if your height is not set to auto, they are gonna stretch because it's gonna keep the height uh, attribute that you put on there. So you will have to put max width 100% and your height of auto um, to actually get everything to work and not to be broken. But overall, it can work really, really well. Now there are more advantages to doing the lazy loading here with uh, this as well. Now every browser technically can implement it a little bit differently. But the Google, for example, they actually show that if something's on a 4G network, images will load in when they're 1250 pixels away from the viewport. But if they're on a slower connection, like a 3D, a 3G connection, it'll start loading them in when they're 2500 pixels away instead. So with JavaScript, it was always just based on intersection observers or scroll event listeners. And as an image got closer, it, it didn't know about the connection speeds and other things like that. So the nice advantage here is the browser can figure that out. It goes, oh, it's a slow connection. I'm going to load it in earlier. Oh, it's a really fast connection. I can load it in just as soon as that image is coming into the viewport. Another really nice thing with lazy loading images like this is even it's right now the browser support is pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's coming along. It's in Firefox, Chrome, and in Safari, it is behind a flag. So it should be coming pretty soon. But the nice thing with this is, is if it doesn't work, your image is still gonna load, right? Uh, so it's not that big of a deal. You could even, if you wanted to, write some JavaScript. So if it doesn't work, then you could bring in uh, your own implementation of it or something like that. But you do not need to do that. And another thing you can do um, as well, let's go all the way up to the top here, um, just for one last image. Uh, let's say you have a, a picture element. 
And here we go, so it's done. Let me just bring it out a little bit. So you can see here, I have a picture element that's bringing in a WebP and the default is a regular image with my fallback pretty much here. Uh, so if I hit save on that, it should load in my image at the top. And if I go and take a look at that image itself, uh, so you can see it's right there. Let's go to my network again, actually. And uh, you can see it has loaded in my WebP image right there. So actually, if I turn off this one, and we go take a look, we shouldn't see a zero one anywhere except for the WebP. So even though um, I have loaded in my image with this, this is the fallback, it's gonna use this source instead. Um, and using things like WebP is another really nice way to optimize your websites. If you haven't dove into the world of WebP and other things like that, I have a full series on optimizing images for the web that maybe you'd be interested in. You should be able to click the link on there right now. I wanna say a really big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you are interested in checking out their deal for two free months, go and click that link down in the description below. A massive thank you to my patrons for helping support me every single month. You guys are absolutely amazing. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.